The question is what, what is the role of exports in the development of the region? Well, one thing is quite clear, that um, if you can have small loops, relatively local production from local materials for local use, you have some solid strength. You are not so vulnerable. And also, of course, you economize very greatly on transport. Now, let us see the, the beauty of relatively high local self-sufficiency. Relative. Everything is relative. Now, the idolatry of exports and imports is really a, a hangover of colonialism. There we sit. Here, this colony, well, it's, it's of value to the metropolitan country only, if there are some valuable exports coming from that country. Uh, in Tanzania, we are not interested in, or Tanganyika used to be called, not interested in the country, or let alone the people, we're interested in getting sisal From uh, Rhodesia, or uh, what is now Zambia, we want uh, copper. So the only things that, that seemed to be really worth having were the exports. Well, that is, uh, that is a hangover of imperialism. Exports are different from other trade, only that they cross frontiers. What's the what's particular value of crossing frontiers? No value. What's, uh, what value is there in producing for people you don't even know, and whose language you don't even know? No value in that, as such. This is an idol uh, idolatry. Now, if, of course, someone far away has something that I want to buy, because bananas in hot houses in England is not very effective, so I want to buy bananas, then I'm interested in buying in imports I'm interested in. Then I have to find the ways of means of payment, uh, and that is the only function of exports. And whether you take this internationally or if you take it in terms of a region or a state of the United States, there's no value, no specific value in sending your goods far afield. It's much, much more sensible to have local production from local materials for local use as far as this is possible. Dr. Schumacher mentioned briefly the importance of trees and the health of a civilization. We're operating under the illusion in the Midwest that we're very wealthy because we extract large crops from our topsoil. I would be interested in hearing a little bit about enclosure in Britain, the importance of hedgerows and the health of topsoil and the civilization as a whole. A friend wants to hear about uh, hedges in Britain, enclosures, microclimate. Well, all I can say is that uh, our government, like uh, many other governments, has paid a lot of subsidies to enable farmers to pull up the hedges so that they would have bigger fields for bigger equipment. Now we uh, almost get, uh, in some parts we get dust, dust storms uh, that you are familiar with. And uh, I'm, I'm quite sure soon the government will give subsidies for replanting hedges <laughs> and uh, encouraging farmers to use smaller equipment. The thing that uh, worries me is that, uh, meanwhile, the smaller equipment has gone out of production. But uh, I, I don't think I can go into a learned disquisition on the microclimate, which is a very important matter, particularly for intensive hortic horticulture.